Hello. Engineers tend to deal with lots of numbers. For example, during tests of the space shuttle main engines, chamber pressure was typically measured at intervals of 0.02 seconds. During a 500 second test, this amounted to about 25,000 data points. And of course, chamber pressure was only one of dozens of measurements that were being made. When analyzing the test data, it obviously wasn't feasible to assign different variable names to each of these values. It was much easier to group the chamber pressure data points as a single variable, which contained 25,000 numbers. That's the general idea behind arrays. The variable contains many numbers, which form a logical grouping. As I mentioned, an array is a single variable which contains a bunch of numbers. These numbers can be used as a group, when that makes sense, or individual numbers can be extracted from the array if that's our preference. For example, this array, named A, contains nine numbers organized in three rows, first row, second row, third row, and three columns, one, two, three. The array X has a single row containing three numbers in three columns. The array Y is also three numbers in a single column with three rows. Individual numbers in the arrays are typically specified by the row and column in which they're found. Mathematically, the row and column numbers are indicated as subscripts separated by commas following the variable name. For example, the element of A in the second row and the third column is 3. This element would be identified in mathematical notation as the variable name A, the row number 2, and the column number 3, and the value there is 3. One-dimensional arrays, which have either a single row or a single column, can be specified by one subscript. So the second row in the x vector, x sub 2, is 2, while the third element in the y vector is negative 6. Creating arrays in MATLAB can be done in a variety of ways. The first approach I'll present is to create the array by individually specifying every element in the array. To specify that the values being typed are going to be an array, enclose the values in square brackets. By default, the first value you specify will be in the first row and the first column of the array. Subsequent to this, successive columns are separated by spaces or commas. Successive rows are separated by semicolons or the Enter key on your keyboard. All variables that you create in MATLAB must be assigned a name. The variable name is placed to the left of an assignment operator, which looks like an equal sign, and the values in the array are placed to the right of the equal sign. For example, consider this array B shown here. To create this array, type the variable name B, an assignment operator, and then the values in the array enclosed with square brackets. An open square bracket tells MATLAB that an array is being created. Then type the elements in the first row, separated by spaces. To move to the second row, type a semicolon, then type the elements in the second row separated by spaces or commas. Another semicolon takes us to the third row, and I type the elements in that row. To show that I'm done creating the array, I close the square bracket and press Enter. Now I'll show some other examples using MATLAB. First, I'll define a two-dimensional matrix named A. So A equals an open square bracket, one space, two space, three, a semicolon to move to the next row, two, comma, five, space, six, a semicolon to move to the final row, seven, comma, eight, comma, nine. Close square brackets. Notice that I can use either spaces or commas to separate columns. Now I'll create a row vector by defining B equals open square bracket, 1 space 3 space 2 space 6 space 7, close square brackets. 
Finally, I'll create a column vector, C equals, open square bracket, 4, semicolon, to move to the next row, 5, semicolon, 6, semicolon, 8, close square brackets. Of course, if you prefer, you can use the inner key to separate rows. Now type D equals, open square brackets, 0, space, 1, space, 0. I'll use an enter key now to move to the next row, 2, space, 1, space, 3. Now, in this case, MATLAB doesn't execute any commands as a result of pressing the enter key, since I haven't closed the square brackets yet, and MATLAB knows that I'm not done defining an array. Scalars can be defined as an array containing a single number. Type x equals, open square bracket, 4, close square bracket. In MATLAB, scalars are simply a special case of an array. However, if we define a scalar, the square brackets are optional. For example, typing y equals 7 works perfectly well. You can also define specific elements of an array by referencing the array element by its indices. As I previously mentioned, in typical mathematical array notation, the elements in an array are specified by the row and column numbers in that order of the element. This row-column combination are the indices of the element. The only difference between the mathematical notation and MATLAB's notation is that in MATLAB, the row and column numbers are placed in parentheses after the array name, instead of using subscripts. The row and column numbers must be separated by a comma. Numbering of rows and columns always starts with one. Elements of one-dimensional arrays can be addressed by a single number. If the array has a single column, use the row number. If the array has a single row, use the column number. I'll walk through a couple of examples here first, and then I'll do some demonstrations using MATLAB. First, suppose that this array already exists in the workspace. I want to assign values to specific locations in the array. For example, let's replace this 4 with a 7. That number is in the second row and the second column. The syntax to do that is to assign 7 to the element of B that's in the second row and the second column. Now that value is set to 7. None of the other elements are affected. To see what happens when we assign a value to an array location that doesn't exist, I'll assign the number 9 to the element in the third row and third column of the B matrix. B doesn't have three columns. So MATLAB creates the location and places a 9 there. MATLAB fills in the unspecified elements with zeros. Now I'll show some more examples of defining or creating specific elements of an array. I'm not going to use any of my previous arrays, so before I do anything else, I'll get rid of all those variables. The command clear space all clears all the variables out of the workspace. I'll check that with the who command. Now I'll create a couple of vectors. So x equals open square bracket, 1 space, 2 space, 3 space, 4, close square bracket. And a column vector y equals square bracket, negative 3, semicolon, negative 2, semicolon, negative 1, semicolon, 0, and close the square bracket. The third element of y can be retrieved by typing y of 3. I can change the second element of x by typing x of 2 equals, for example, 5. Notice that the elements of a one-dimensional array can be defined with a single index. It isn't necessary for us to keep track of whether the array is a row or a column. MATLAB does that for us. However, you can use two indexes if you prefer. For example, I can redefine the second element of x with the command x of 1, 2 equals negative 6. That's the element in the first row and the second column. An element can be added to y by typing y of 3, 4, equals 7. MATLAB increases the size of the array as necessary, 
puts a 7 in the correct location and assigns any undefined locations to be 0. Matrix creation can be streamlined if there's a pattern to the elements being created. The approach uses colons to specify the values. The generic syntax is that we specify a starting value, an increment between values, and an ending value, or more accurately, a value that won't be exceeded. When the array is created, its first element is set equal to start underscore val. Subsequent elements in the array are created by adding the value specified by increment to the previous element in the array. MATLAB ends creation of the array when the next value exceeds the value specified by end underscore val. This example specifies a starting value of 0 0.2, an increment of 0.3, and a final value of 0.9. The array starts with the value 0.2. The next value will be 0.2 plus 0.3 or 0.5. The next value is 0.5 plus 0.3 or 8. The next value that would be created is going to be 0.8 plus 0.3, which is 1.1. But 1.1 is bigger than the final specified value, so MATLAB stops creating the array. In this example, the array is assigned to a variable named x, so the variable x contains three values, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, and 0 0.8. By default, MATLAB creates row vectors. Now let's use MATLAB to create some much larger arrays. For starters, I'll create a fairly large vector, starting at 0, ending at 10, and having increments of 0 0.1. There are 101 points in the vector, and they scroll by pretty fast. Watching them do that isn't really very productive, but we can keep the results from being displayed on the screen if we choose. Just terminate the command with a semicolon and display the output of the command as suppressed. Let's create another large array by typing big array equals 0 colon 0 0.01 colon 100, followed by a semicolon, and then press enter. The variable big array is created, and it is in our workspace for later use, but we don't need to look at the number. There are a variety of MATLAB functions which create arrays. I'll give a pretty short list here with very few details as to how they're used. If you know the function name, it's easy to find the appropriate syntax and how the command works using MATLAB's help files. Linspace creates a one-dimensional array of uniformly spaced values. Logspace creates, again, a one-dimensional array, but they are logarithmically spaced values. Zeros creates a two-dimensional array full of zeros. You give it the number of rows and the number of columns you want in the array, it does the rest. Ones creates a two-dimensional array of ones, similarly to the way zeros works. EYE creates an identity matrix. It has ones on the main diagonal and zeros off of the main diagonal. RAND and RANDN create two-dimensional arrays of random numbers. RAND creates uniformly distributed numbers. RANDN creates normally distributed random numbers. Again, once you know these command names, you can find out how to use them using MATLAB's help files. Arrays can be created to incorporate other arrays. You can use any combinations of the array creation approaches I've given you previously as long as the dimensions of the arrays are consistent. For example, remember that commas or spaces are used to separate columns when defining an array element by element. Suppose I define an array A to be this and an array B to be this. Now I can define another array C in which the A and B arrays are separated by a space. The space, as usual, implies that the first and second sets of numbers form two sets of columns. Therefore, the resulting array is this. A is here, B is here. Alternately, you can create an array D in which the A and B arrays are separated by a semicolon. 
the semicolons used to separate rows. So the array A forms the first set of rows of D, and B forms the second set of rows of D. The resulting array is this. It has two columns, four rows, here's A, here's B. The process of combining arrays in this way is called concatenation. There's a MATLAB command, cat, which can be used to concatenate arrays as well. I'm not going to illustrate use of this command. You should be able to figure out how it works from my examples above and MATLAB's help files. Now I'll do a couple of examples that use both the built-in functions and concatenation. First, I'll create an array with two rows and three columns by typing A equals, open square bracket, zero space, one space, two, a semicolon to move to the next row, three space, four space, five, and close the square brackets. Now I'll use the ones command to create an array of ones with two rows and two columns by typing C equals ones of two comma two, where the first argument is the number of rows and the second argument is the number of columns. I'll also create an array of zeros with two rows and three columns by typing D equals zeros of two comma three. I can concatenate the array of ones as additional columns to the A array by typing open square bracket A comma C close square bracket. The comma implies that the columns of A are added as an additional columns to the array C. I can also add the zeros of the D array as additional columns to the A array by typing open square bracket A space D since a space can also be used to separate columns. It's also legitimate to add the zeros of the D array as additional rows of the array A by typing open square bracket A semicolon D. The semicolon, of course, implies that the next entries will be all in subsequent rows. Finally, it's important to realize that the sizes of the arrays you're trying to concatenate have to be consistent. I could add the array D as additional columns to the array A because they both have the same number of rows. Likewise, I could add the array D as additional rows of the array A because they have the same number of columns. C could be appended as additional columns to A because they both have the same number of rows. However, I can't add C as additional rows to A because they don't have the same number of columns. To illustrate this, type open square bracket, A, semicolon, C, close square bracket. I get an error message. This is our first glimpse into the importance of keeping track of the sizes of our arrays. In order to work effectively with arrays, it's really important to know the number of rows and columns that are in all of your arrays. One command that can help you do this is the size command. The size command returns the number of rows and columns in an array in that order. For example, if I type size of A, my answer is an array with the numbers 2 and 3 in it. The output argument is an array containing two values. The first value is the number of rows in the argument array, and the second value is the number of columns in the array. So size of C returns 2, 2. C has two rows and two columns. Creating and working with arrays is super duper maxi ultra mega friggin important when using MATLAB. So I want to summarize what I've covered in this video. I talked about three main methods for creating arrays. First, arrays can be created explicitly listing the elements in the array. The second approach I talked about was to use colon notation. Finally, I introduced some special purpose functions to create certain types of arrays. I also talked about creating arrays from other arrays or concatenation. In the next video, I'll talk about accessing specific values or ranges of values in an array. The main difference there will be that the arrays will be to the right of the assignment operator rather than the left.